Hey. Hey, are we here? <laughs> I can't even tell. Oh. Hey. That's on hey, my end. I was like, well, this is like from the future. I'm we're, we're oh. talking over music, but it was a rookie mistake on my end. I had the uh never mind. Man, I'm you guys, I'm having major, major computer malfunctions over here. My main computer is now officially DOA, man. So I'm I'm on here. I'm on here. I'm it's this is very confusing. But welcome, 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 everybody. Uh what I don't even know where I'm looking. July 24th, 2020, 8 10 p.m. Eastern, 5 10 Pacific. Jay Hannon is here. Hey Jay. See you. I see you. <laughs> Welcome, man. And uh, Jay, who do we have here tonight? We have a very close friend of mine from uh, the band Byzantine, who I'm wearing the shirt tonight. Uh, Chris OJ Ojeda. Ojeda. Sorry. There's me. Hey. <laughs> well, hi. Welcome. Thanks again. How's Welcome, it going, guys? Going good. Good, man. good, good, good. Good to see you again, man. Good I know Johnny. You were here before, uh, well back. Mm -hmm. You know, what was Wait, it? Two years? Wait, you were on a show? No, actually, no. I you? Okay, yeah. then maybe you weren't. <laughs> um, I, I've talked to you. I've talked to you though. I've talked to you on 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 uh, on video. So maybe what, what that was was uh, I was having some streaming issues, and uh, you were kind enough to jump in and. And become like a, uh, a tech consultant. So that's where we spoke. Okay. Okay. You, know, awesome. you interviewed our guitar player uh, Brian Henderson um, on the show. Right. 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 Okay. Cool. So this is my first time. Okay. Awesome. Well, welcome, man. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so um, before we get too far into it, I just want to say everybody that we got uh, OJ's band is doing a live. Uh, streaming performance tomorrow afternoon. So we figured we'd get him on, talk about that. He just opened up a few more tickets. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're going to get into all that stuff. So if anybody, you know, wants to, uh, yeah, do something like that, be very, uh, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But um, <laughs> let me just do a quick run of, uh, what is it called again? Of, uh, of who's in here? Yeah. Roll call. Roll, roll call. call. Roll. Yeah, I guess I'll do a roll call right now. Should right. I? Yeah. Yeah. Like grade right. school, right? What? Like grade school. They used to yeah. do roll call. And then they would ask you, they would be like, Jay Hannon. And you'd say yes. And they'd be like, free lunch? Yes. Like the poor kids would get free lunch. And they would call them out on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids oh. nowadays. That, that's how they roll here. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. I'm starving. I know. I was always, uh, luckily, I was never a free lunch kid, but uh, I remember eating uh, some of my friends' free lunch, and it was way better than what the shit my mom was packing. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we got Hugh Caldwell, Cobra Kai Platoon, Brian Spaulding, Grungy Kev C. He's in Logan, West Virginia. Hey. Uh, hey, Grungy. Well, Frank Corcoran, Matt Reynolds, John BL5150, oh. you son of a... Oh, he's here. Janice Lala, uh, Thomas Santiago, Susie Cherry. Um, who else? Let me see. I don't want to... I hate reading names twice, but if I do, I do. Hal Face, uh, Kurt S5150. Frank Corcoran, I see. Uh, my beautiful wife is in here. Jeannie says hello. Hey, Jeannie. Uh, Steve, Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. Guitar for a Cure is here. Janice Lal is here. Um, we got a lot of people in here. Still rolling in, man. This that's, is cool. That's a uh, that's a lot. There's um, we already got 54, and we just started, so that's pretty good. Wow. So did Chris Bevin, you guys actually put my face, or did you put like Devin Townsend up? And <laughs> I'll see how you do. All right, and everybody else: Brian Nida, <laughs> Kenko Door, Robot Master Switch. Jason, Na oh man, I, I always mess up this last name. Jason N. Sorry, Jason. Hey, Jason. Music therapy lads and everybody else. Thank you for joining. Steve, Steve Barton's in here. Sorry, you guys. If I'm looking this way, I, I I'm having to control stuff over here, but I'm having to look over here. 
Um, we got Steve Barton over on Facebook because we're live on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, right now. And speaking of speaking of YouTube, where are we? You can become a sponsor of the channel. You can click the join button below, and basically, you just you become a uh, a sponsor of the videos. You help with the uh, with the production of the videos, um, everything. The top tier sponsors are the executive producers like Charles Green, Joe Christian, Thomas Santiago, Music Therapy Laz, Mike Nice, Michael Smith, and Steve Carmichael. Thank you, thank you so much, you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, and this is also a podcast. Oh, really? Mention. Yeah. Yeah, so this episode eventually, <laughs> will, be eventually. Over, will eventually be over on iHeartRadio. So you know, my computer sucks, so it, it takes me you know forever to do this. Um, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. So make sure to check that out. Yeah. <clears throat> Man, this is nice. You guys, uh, we got some people here. Yeah. I know I know a couple of them, too. I've, there's some buddies in here. How you doing, buddies? You know who I'm talking about. Hey, hey, hey okay, do you have the um? Do you have the chat room up or no? I do. I I, I had the private chat and I didn't see anything, and now just oh yeah. Over. Okay. So now, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the oh, private um, the private chat is just us, and so we never use it. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Unless one of us is talking crap about the other one. <laughs> 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 So, OJ, why don't we just jump into um to the live stream for tomorrow okay. uh, and how everything's happening and what goes into it and all that good stuff. Well, I it's a it's a, a learning process. Um, what happens tomorrow uh, is pretty much the going to be the litmus test for what we might be doing for the next year or so. Uh, obviously, we don't really know as a music industry, when things are going to go back to normal or if ever. So I have actually been preparing for doomsday like this for two years, unknowingly. Uh, Jay so you're, in your, you're in your underground bunker right now. I am, I am. I'm sitting on cans of beans. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. Um, <laughs> Two years ago, I started buying equipment to do a live stream show that was called Biz TV. Um, yeah. I, I streamed a few just uh, small episodes of me uh, doing vocal training and running some of our songs just as a test. And then the, the, um, the rehearsal space we were in, we got, we got kicked out of. So that put... Uh, biz tv on the back burner until i was able to purchase a my own building and start building my own music facility which i'm in right now and um now we're getting ready to stream our first performance tomorrow i'm really nervous uh jay has helped a lot with the uh you know we've been rehearsing he's been working on the drum production for where he's at trying to get everything going but you know we're gonna rip it tomorrow. See how see how it goes. Uh, if the fans dig it and they think it uh, is worth doing again and worth paying for, then we'll uh, we'll keep doing this. So awesome, man. awesome. Yeah, I do remember that Byzantine TV now. I remember that. And they, yeah, that was a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. I I think I maybe streamed three or four things, and I was trying to produce and do everything myself, and it was really really difficult. So I'm glad that I had this time to step away from it and buy some more gear. Uh, because now what we have been test streaming to ourselves um, sounds killer, looks killer. Uh, it's just up to us now as a band to, you know, not drop the ball. So but I, I, we're ready. Well, I, I guess, you know, I don't want to make it, you know, more nerve wracking for you, dude, but, um, <clears throat> you know, usually when you're playing a live show, Obviously, there's the excitement nerves and then, you know, there's that slight nervousness of like, you know, making sure that you're on that night and you're playing right and all that stuff. Right. But now you got a whole nother aspect of like the stream going. Yes. Um, making sure that that is OK. Right. And obviously, you know, messing up in front of a crowd, a lot of it gets covered up. 
You know, you got the venue that's that's everything's bouncing off. Mm -hmm. You got people cheering and everything. But when it's everything's mic'd and it's coming out of, you know, people's speakers at home, it's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, we are uh, we're laid bare. Um, yeah. Like you said, uh, all of those things play into us probably sounding better than we do to our fans. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time we play at midnight, they're shit face drunk. So they don't catch all the, the, the missed triplets and stuff. So tomorrow when we're streaming at four o'clock, most people will be sober. And like you said, they're going to have their headphones on sitting in front of the computer, picking up every note. Um, it is what it is. Um, I, I was texting with my buddy, Whitley Adler uh, yesterday because Lamb of God's going to probably be doing a live stream in August. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned something that I thought was really, uh, really important to keep in mind. And this is coming from a huge band. He was like, man, I'm going to miss triplets. The drummer is going to miss uh, kick drums. Randy's going to sing some stuff out of key. Um, we have to go ahead and let fans see this so they can connect with us on a human level. Because mm -hmm. fans at home don't want to watch something that is so heavily produced that it makes them want to sell their guitars and you know what I mean and give up like we mm -hmm. need that connection so we're gonna you know we're gonna show some flaws tomorrow uh anybody who's seen us play knows that we are not perfect but um we're gonna give it a good college try well that's a bunch of bullshit because <laughs> when we when we toured together in 2005 <laughs> we that that, that co-headlining tour yeah um I remember the first show I think it was St. Louis if I'm Maybe, maybe St. Louis. I forget. But anyway, I remember because we never, we never met you guys before. Mm -mm. You know, it was our first time like meeting the day of the first show. It was Iowa. Iowa. Okay. Iowa. I hear you. So yeah. I remember when you guys got off stage and maybe it was after or so I forget, but I remember going up to, I don't know if it was you or maybe Matt, your old drummer. And I said, I can't believe how tight you guys are. Like how often do you, do you rehearse? And you, and it was either you or Matt said, man, we haven't rehearsed in two weeks. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> you guys like literally you know that, stage, uh, you, uh, your ears at that point, you hadn't been, uh, fully submerged in Byzantine like you are now. So now, you know, we're, Every kick drum goes where every hi hat goes, where every vocal should go. Yeah. So you've heard you've heard the worst of that. <laughs> and you're still my friend, and I love you for it. But yeah, back then, I guess we did, and we still do have a uh, good knack where we don't play a lot of when people haven't seen us in a while, and then they see us. It's jarring sometimes when we're on, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yeah. Really, really neat. <laughs> Oh man! How do we buy a ticket? Yeah, I, I, was about to, I was about to say let's let's get question. that now. Yeah, where was that at? It moved on me. Um, crap! Let's somebody see. asked. Well, anyway, somebody asked, "How do we buy tickets?" Um, you go to the website, stage it, which is s t a g e i t dot com, and then you search Byzantine. <laughs> Actually. You don't even have to search Byzantine because I got contacted by Stage It yesterday and they were going to put us on the front page next to Leanne Rhymes and some other people. So you just go to Stage It and you can look at the new shows and you can click on our show or you can go to Facebook and uh, on our Byzantine page and we have links there. So they have a unique system. They don't call them dollars. They call them notes. So... Um, 10 notes is $1. So our show is 50 notes, which is $5. It's just like a conversion. That makes um, it sound more expensive than it really is, though. It does. There's probably people who's jumped in there and be like, fuck, I ain't paying that shit. <laughs> 50 bucks. Who do they think they are? Uh, um, yeah, so, yeah, $4.99. Um, so yeah, it's five bucks. Stage it. Check it out. We... We just unleashed uh, 20 more tickets, and uh, I've got notification that we've sold two so far, so we should have 18 left. Oh, well, let's let's see if we can sell all 18 tonight. Yeah, that would be sure. We got 69, 69 people in here. 
and wow. boner jams hey dude ladies and gentlemen boner jams here wishing you the merriest of fridays jay being an oj uh great uh what's that word probably a menage oh oh yeah can't argue with that yeah look at that <laughs> hair he's got that's um that's that's brian oj oh is it brian yeah, yeah. okay that's that's some other idiot's hairdo thank you so much man yeah yeah it looks like i'm going <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's no ticket johnny i'll be there cool <laughs> well johnny we do have a couple backstage passes eat free internet passes that i can give to a couple of select people so if you have nothing going on tomorrow where are you located I'm in Santa Cruz. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's early, but uh, if you have nothing going on, I'll send you a link. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, man. Um, so, you said it's tomorrow at, at four o'clock? Four o'clock uh, Eastern, one o'clock Pacific. One o'clock Pacific. Okay. Now, explain yeah. why you're doing the afternoon show. Okay. So, I initially set it up at nine o'clock Eastern. Um, and then I was lucky enough to watch the Trivium live stream the day after I set ours up. And I, I, I was like, wow, they're streaming. There's at four. That's weird. And then I realized in their chat room, somebody said they're doing this so people in Europe can watch. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck, mm -hmm. I didn't even think about Europe. It's like <laughs> evening. We streamed at nine o'clock. Nobody on that continent could watch. So, I uh, I took a uh, liberty of changing it to four. So, you know, the West Coast is good. East Coast is good. Europe's good. Australia is, you know, that one guy who likes us in Australia, he'll just have to wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, and also um, another thing that we're doing in conjunction with this stream is that um, two years ago, we stopped selling merchandise outside the U.S. because the postal system rates increased so dramatically. I didn't feel our fans should have to pay $20 for a shirt that's only 20 bucks, you know, 20 in shipping. So I put a moratorium on shipping two years ago. Um, for this weekend, starting tonight, I'm going to open up shipping. So anybody who wants to watch the stream tomorrow uh, can just – you know, if you're in Canada, South America, wherever, you can buy our merch for this weekend. Very cool. Yeah. But what, what, if somebody wants to pay $20 for shipping for a T-shirt, let them. I, I know. That's what everybody told me. Um, yeah. I, I do a lot of things where I shoot myself in the foot, um, <laughs> you know, and maybe I have. But here is the other thing. Every piece of merchandise anybody buys from us, I have to mail it out myself, take it to the post office, fill out the forms. It's exhausting. Two yeah. years ago, also, you could just take them to the post office and they would set them aside and fill them out later. And now you have to sit there. So if I show up with six overseas packages, everybody behind me wants to kick my ass. Yeah. So, yeah, I just stopped it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could understand why. So this weekend, you know, we'll take the hit, and if anybody outside <laughs> outside the U.S. needs anything, we'll ship it to them. So, one of your band members works for a company that ships stuff. Why don't you just give everything to him and let him do it? I know, you know, Matt. I can't trust him with anything. <laughs> 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 wow! So, so you actually package everything yourself, then? Yeah. All the merch. Is it because do, do you autograph? You autograph a lot of stuff. Yeah, sometimes they'll ask to do that. Um, but uh, I tried to go through a merchandise company a couple times. When we signed with Metal Blade, that was one of the things they wanted us to do was take the brunt uh, or take the load off of me and, and go with one of their merch companies. Mm -hmm. And then when I told them how much volume we did, they laughed and said, we're not fucking with you. You can send it out. Oh, yeah, so the volume is, you know, it's a, it's – it's a, a, a good amount for me, but for a merch company, they don't want to mess with it. So I, I have to just do everything by hand. 
and I kind of like it too. You know, I, I get to know everybody's names. So if we do play a show and somebody comes up, I'm like, hey, you live at 16 Sterling Drive. <laughs> what? what? So. <laughs> that way you, you, you know where everybody is. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the way to do it, man. You want to keep, you know, you, you, you want to know. <laughs> yeah. You want to know. And I, I guess, you know, as a fan of a band, I guess that it makes it more personal and kind of neat. You know, if think of it this way. If I bought a Van Halen shirt and I knew that Eddie Van Halen actually <laughs> packed it up and shipped it out to him, I'd yeah. like, yeah. You wouldn't even throw the package away. No. You'd be like, he wrote my name and my address on there. It'd be, it'd be all plastered to the back wall behind me, you know. <laughs> exactly. Wouldn't even, wouldn't even open it. You, you'd o you'd o yeah. you'd order two of them and keep one sealed, you know, for collectors, you know. Yeah. And a few, you know, um, a lot of times, if somebody's local, I'll just drive it to their house. <laughs> I've done that a bunch, like a pizza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> man. Oh, so, man. Um, if you want, man, um, your last album came out. In 2000, beginning of 2017, right? Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen you. It has, and it's, yeah. it's pretty sad. This is actually nice right now that I get to see your beautiful face. But um, <laughs> last time I saw you, I was um, trying to show you how to change your daughter's diaper, and we both have, like, we're almost four now. I know. Isn't that nuts? Now, for those of you who don't know, OJ and I are very close friends, so close, in fact, that we actually tried to schedule – Pregnancies, pregnancies. Oh, yeah. So our so our kids would be born on the same day, and we were off by one day, one man. One day, <laughs> one day. Yeah. So imagine, <laughs> imagine that phone call when it was going on. OJ, I'm, I'm about to. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> Put the plug like, in. Are you there yet? <laughs> Ever sit upside down for a few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> one day is crazy. <laughs> and I was actually bummed. I remember uh, the night Ellie was born, we, me and OJ were texting and I was like excited. I was like, you guys, you know, whatever. And he was like, oh, no, we're, we're it's going to be tomorrow. And I was like, shh, man. Yeah. But hey. and then, uh, after we had our daughter, uh, I immediately had to fly down to Jay and work on the album. Remember? Was, yeah. I mean, you had a newborn baby there and I had a newborn baby at the house. We, I, we were doing... What guitar solos and vocals and stuff? Yeah, guitar solos, leads and yeah. uh, and vocals. On yeah, the, so on the cicada tree on this album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And looking back, I mean, shoot, because our daughters were, I think, I think two weeks old when when you came down, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't imagine, you know, because it was easier for me, you know, with my with Ellie being here. But for you, man, to have to leave a two year, two month or a two week old, like for two weeks, you were here, you guys were here for two weeks, man. Yeah, it was, it was rough. I, I felt really, uh, felt really bad, but I've got a wonderful, uh, wonderful lady, um, in my life. And you know, I mean, she puts up with a lot of stuff. They don't, they all, man. They all, they all. yeah. You're when we did the uh, fear factory, uh, what was it? No, when we did the covers down at your house and we were going to be working on a Megadeth tune that mm -hmm. we never released, Jeannie was about to freaking kill me. Remember? Because yeah. I, I couldn't play the riff right. Uh, anybody who's in here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and tell it. Because, do it. Uh, uh, we were getting ready to do a song with uh, Nick Menza from Megadeth and we were doing um, Tornado of Souls. Mm -hmm. Right. So Nick recorded the drum parts and sent it to Jay and I was going to record the rhythm guitar parts. And I was not, I was not ready. Like that song whooped my ass. Didn't it? <laughs> well, the re I think part of the reason is because we had the isolated original isolated guitar tracks. Yeah. And there were certain things in there that you don't really pick up when you hear the full mix. So remember when me and you were sitting there and you're like, wait a minute, there's some other note that he's adding to that chord. Yeah, you know, but the, the funny thing is, is this was in the house I we owned previously to this one, and we had the amp set up in one of the spare bedrooms upstairs, and the walls in that house really thin. The floor was super thin, and we had that cabinet or the amp cranked. Remember? Yes. <laughs> so you know, late at night, you know, OJ's OJ's playing the guitar parts. I'm recording them, and the house is just like 
<laughs> you know, shaking. Yeah. And and Hendo was there just drinking beer, walking around, being like, ah, that note's wrong. You're playing it wrong. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You're playing it wrong. I'm like, Yeah, man. Somewhere, somewhere we sent that off. Somewhere there is a copy of uh us me playing Tornado of Souls and uh, with uh Nick Menza, but uh, like a couple months before he died. Yeah, and remember we sent it off, and they shelved it. I think, I don't know if Mustaine got word or whatever, but it just never came out. Yeah, but, yeah, we we spent some. You, you spent a lot of hard work on that to get. But no, 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 they did a little, little, little. God, <laughs> over and over. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah, man. But uh, I mean, the cool thing is, is you know. <clears throat> Our our wives or our girls are are super cool about everything, but more importantly, you have in what what a lot of uh, metal websites and reviews, literally like a lot of them, the Cicada Tree was like the metal album of the year on a lot of lists. There was a yeah, there was a few that thought that it was uh, the bee's knees that year. So yeah, you know, wow, so that's more important, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even though, like, if I have to uh, list our discography uh, for some, uh, even though this album was very difficult for me to record, uh, it was right after I, we had I had just got divorced and we were recording in my house. But to me, to releases and to to releases to resolve is my favorite Byzantine album. It's gonna be hard to top that one for me. So. Hmm. A lot of a lot of darkness, a lot of dark lyrics going on in that one, and I thought you absolutely nailed the drum tone. It's like that album is why Gene Hoagland contacted us and was like, "That album has a great drum tone. I, I need to meet your producer and yeah. you know make friends with you." So I love that, that one. Was cool. That was that was a an ex a interesting record to record. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. that know. was the first one with um with Brian. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I remember the night that, that he came over and started tracking his guitar solos. It was the first night I had met him. And, you know, as a guitar player and you guys, everybody in this, in this, on the show right now is a guitar player. And I'm sure a lot of you in the chat, um, you know, producing a record was very, is very tough when a guitar player comes in and you know, they've been working on their solos for, if not week, sometimes, you know, longer than that. And it's very hard to tell somebody that is sold on something. Like, I've been working on this for weeks, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Hey, why don't you try doing this instead? And then it's like, what are you talking about? Cause I've been in the same situation. You know, you, you think something's great. Awesome. And then somebody's like, Oh, well try something else. But, but Brian was called. We didn't, I don't think we changed that much of, of what he had. It was more or less like just a little like extra flavor stuff to throw <clears throat> Yeah, that was basically we we would sometimes tell him to land on a different spot and the la on a phrase, but other than that, like you know, we never changed hardly any of the phrases on there. And that, uh, I think his solos on the last album, uh, you know, are more mature. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, they're great. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to record again. Everybody keeps asking us when we're going to do another uh, something uh, Byzantine related. You know. Metal Blade's going to get mad and because we're taking so much time. But, um, you know, I, we've used this time wisely. Obviously, we've had kids. Um, I had to build a music facility for a lot of uh, mu musicians in town. And I'm still spending a lot of time here working on it. And uh, pretty soon we're getting ready to uh, we're going to have to start sharing demos and tearing into uh, another another album. So. So I, I, I guess we can tell it now. Maybe um, we're going to do an EP, right? That's what we talked about. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. OJ, we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do an EP instead of a full <laughs> album. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell what it is, but uh, it's it's uh, it's going to have uh, four original songs and two covers on it. I love the covers idea. Somebody just wrote over there. They they really enjoyed Piss Christ, 
which I I think is probably our favorite, my favorite cover. Dude, if anybody in your house and knock that out with the quickness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if anybody's a Fear Factory fan, you got to check out Byzantine's cover of Piss Christ. It is, it is phenomenal. It really is. Yeah. It got the the stamp of approval from Dino, which yep. is, is good. When you when you have the man uh, who wrote the manufacturer, you know, text you and be like, "Hey, man, you." <laughs> You guys killed Piss Christ. I'm like, oh man. Yeah. Um, it's a lot yeah. different than you know. Sometimes you'll you'll hear about a band that you know somebody will ask them about. Oh, what do you think of the cover that so and so did of your song? And yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. Took all the life out of it. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of um of recording, um, I know some people in, in the chat they always ask about like you know what goes into recording a record and production and all that stuff do you want to talk about like how you guys kind of get into writing mode and uh and kind of prepare music for sure. an album sure yeah yeah and we can go over uh, that and then how we've been preparing for this live stream we'll go over the live stream first because that's 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 the main thing right now since you got that tomorrow okay. yeah so i'm gonna turn my camera around so people can kind of see where what we've built here yeah um, I've got a, so the room I am in used to be an engine and transmission shop and I was able to buy it on auction. Um, I sold my house and now you I, live there in the transmission. Yeah. <laughs> I took the money from the sale of the house and was able to buy this. So you can see the center block walls. We've got 12 foot high, uh, acoustical grid ceilings. Um, over here is our uh, scrims, and we've got lights up here and on our uh, on our um, amps. You can't really see them back there. We got lights back there. We got lights over here in the corner. Everything is Arlexed. Um, so I have – we've constructed six rooms just like this. They're all filled. And then we also have a video and editing room here in the building. And right now we're currently building instruction rooms so guitars and drum teachers can teach. And we're going to be building a studio and hopefully we'll be able to work remotely with Jay uh, even more. Um, but this has taken me about six months to construct. Um, I made sure that we outfitted the whole place with the most ripping internet possible. That way everybody can live stream. I ran cat six to every room. So everybody has a hard line. Um, so tomorrow uh, we're going to be utilizing all of this. Um, the rooms, you know, it used to sound really shitty. It doesn't sound that bad now. Um, we had to buy all in-ear monitoring system to make this work. Mm -hmm. We used to just only use wedges for like 18 years. But uh, we spent uh, close to about five thousand uh, dollars on the in-ear monitoring system and buying a uh, X32 so we can uh, run it. We'll be streaming directly to a Mac and then uh, right to you guys. And uh, everything is going to be lined up with a um, a lighting show. We Byzantine has never had the uh, the the um, luxury of having a lighting show we could never afford an ld when we played so anybody who's ever seen us live we was at the mercy of whatever venue they had sometime they just turn on stage lights and we played mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. so i uh taught myself over the last four months a program called ableton and i was able to go in and literally paint in every movement for every light it's very tedious and it's produced a lot of headaches but uh, tomorrow we'll be able to see a full light show in conjunction with the music um it's gonna be fun you know if if, if the internet doesn't go down <laughs> <laughs> man that's great man i yeah. i know i know of ableton that, that's, yeah. a, that's a great program man and it's, yeah. you can you know you can use this stuff uh to 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 program and control a lot of different different things, lights, 
other computers. Um, you can trigger, you know, all, all different types of stuff. Yeah. So our tour manager, Daniel, he, when we would be out on the road, we would always bounce this stuff off each other. How can we get better? What we can add? And he would always be like, dude, you got to get Ableton. You got to get Ableton. But I knew nobody in my town or around here that had it. So I was hesitant about jumping in down that rabbit hole. But I started, you know, Johnny, I, I started getting on YouTube and, and uh, searching Ableton. And it all comes up of these uh, prayer worship people in church. They have this shit locked down. <laughs> like the, the worship leaders, they know what they're doing. I, I've got one of those down the street, man. Really? Where, where, what happened was our power, this is probably uh, maybe a year ago or something. Whenever Jay, remember when I did the show from the car battery? Yes. And that night, <laughs> our power was out for like, I don't know, a week or something. And and there's a church, uh, you know, like a town over. And and I had to go in there to use the bathroom. And they were, they, and they were <laughs> practicing one of their uh, services. The light show and the sound in there was unbelievable. Yeah, it's like a rock con. It's a rock concert, basically. Right. You know, church these days is like going to a concert. It is, man. When you don't have to pay taxes, I mean, you can spend your money on a lot of shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I watch I watch a lot of uh, prayer worship uh, tutorials on YouTube, and they have taught me from the beginning how to set up lights, how to program your MIDI. Uh, and I mean, right now we have two years ago, we was a band who clicked the sticks and had to rely on stage monitors. And tomorrow will be the first time we'll be able to perform for people where we have a click track. We have uh, vocal cues. We got samples going, we've got automated lights and it's all done in house. So whenever the, you know, the COVID thing, uh, allows us to get back on stage, We'll be able to take this full show to other people, and uh, you know it's exciting. It just takes a lot of uh, a lot of time and a lot of education, you know. But well, hold on, I want to stop you there. When you say now, I know everything that you guys are going to be using because I've been right. you know going over this with you and, and whatever. But when you say samples going, I I don't think I think sometimes nowadays, especially nowadays, I think people hear that and they think backing vocal tracks oh yeah all the extra stuff that a band can't do live right and i don't think that's what you're talking about no i need to preface myself you're right uh we played a festival last year in west virginia and they had a touring package there and there was you know a couple of the bands had one guitar player yet you hear you heard two guitars playing those are the samples that jay's talking about what we're doing tomorrow is we're taking samples from our albums. Like uh, we tend to have segues um, on, on albums between songs or we'll have a cool sound or, uh, you know, something like that. So we're, we're able to introduce those into the live show and be able to trigger those from Ableton. So mm -hmm. it's not like they're, uh, 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 playing extra guitar parts or their uh, auto tune them of voice. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just yeah. noise. Like yeah, sound it's more, effects. It's, it's, it's more, it's like in between, like in between your live performance, you'll have the samples of other stuff. So yeah. it, it, it enhances the, the, the show. Yeah. Well, we, uh, you know, for the last couple of years, we did samples live, but we ran them from a trigger pad that our drummer would have to hit. Always have problems. Always <laughs> have problems. The DI wouldn't work, or he would hit the wrong one and start the, the another song. And this way, I was like, dude, it's you know now you can just <clears throat> focus on playing as opposed to you know orchestrating. So and the thing about playing live when using a, a trigger pad, sound effects, whatever, is if you're not using your own you know front of house engineer. Or something, and next thing you know, the sample comes in loud yeah. as hell, loud yeah. in the, you know the band. It's like there's so many different variables, especially you know playing live with uh, yeah stuff. But <laughs> yeah, so I didn't, I actually didn't realize that Ableton did all that. I thought it was just another like doll yeah. or something. I, I didn't yeah, it, uh, there's a lot of people who use it just to make like beats. Uh, yeah, I get a lot of that style of music. Yeah, it's very big, very big with with uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, what do you call it? Like rave, you know, rave types music and yes, and, um, yeah, yeah. It, it has a ton of plugins that come with it that gives them all the the type of uh, enhances that style of music. But it also have a has a whole other side to where you can um, you can orchestrate your whole show in there and have it all triggered uh, with your lights. You have to be able to understand MIDI. And that's what I didn't understand. So I had to teach myself uh, how to uh, how to uh, draw in MIDI. So mm -hmm. once I was able to do that and be able to figure out, I can do transients. I can make it go, you know, uh, soft and hard. Um, um, I mean, <laughs> I, I I feel like we're going to have a pretty decent live show tomorrow. But I know I've probably got years of learning on this. So it's only going to get better. Can, can is this something that you could bring on the road with you? Yes. Yeah. It's all come. I can break it all down in 15 minutes and put it in a couple bags and uh, ready to go. So, so, how, so I mean, obviously I, I know nothing about this, but um, so if you, if you go to a venue, mm -hmm. like how does that hook up to their lighting system? So what uh, I would do is if, if it's a smaller venue, which is what we typically play, we would tell them, hey, go ahead and leave on a couple lights overhead just for a, some dim illumination between songs. Turn everything else off. We're going we're gonna to hook up all our lights. Our lights, uh, you can run DMX cables to them, but it would be a spaghetti string of cables on stage. What I have is wireless DMX. Ooh. So it's a little more money, but each one of our lights just has a little little thing plugged into the back and they just talk to each other. Um, oh. So yeah, that helps a lot. Um, the next level, Jay, uh, what I'm going to try to figure out is uh, in the DMX universe, it calls it the universe because you can add up to 500 lights. <laughs> I'm going to probably pre-program venue lights and let them automate and then when i show up they'll be like oh we have this type of light i'll be like okay i've already pre-programmed the show for that let me plug into that and then i can access their lights but that's gonna that's gonna take me a a lot of coffee yeah to, to figure that shit out so but, <laughs> wow yeah i mean that's we'll that's great man you can let you can let the sound guy just just go back to sleep yeah, you know? yeah. You're running everything. You're doing everything yourself. Yeah, right. just let the sound guy basically run the front of house. Um, and we bought a X32 and a extra like a uh, extra stage box, so that way we can split the signal off and we can give them a clean, un unaffected signal. And then we can also have a signal going to our ears with all our own um, compressions and gates. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that one of the lights behind you? Um, where at Jay? one of the, the, the stand things on the edge of the uh Over here? Yeah. No, this is the edge of our oh. screen. Yeah. So where's one of the lights? Um let me bring it around here. I will see if I can show you. Uh oh. Oh no! <laughs> I hope it doesn't happen tomorrow. <laughs> it's like you moved the computer slightly to the left, and the whole thing just crashed. Hey, Adam, welcome, dude. Oh, no. oh that face. Hey. Yeah. Did you see it? No, we lost no. it, man. Uh, okay. You see the light right there? It's asleep on these okay. on these. Yeah. Apps. Okay. And then there's a we got a lighting tree up there. So I've I've bought about I bought two or three. Or store eight lights. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to have to jump off here for two minutes and plug my Mac into the wall because it's about to die. So give me, oh. give me two minutes. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. So, hey, Johnny, what's going on? Hey, man. <laughs> wow. Pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's awesome, and I'm 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 so glad he brought up Ableton, man, because that's something I I know a little bit about. And see, to me, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Talking about all that crap that you know, that's 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 cool stuff. Yeah, I didn't realize um, it did all that, man. You know, that's yeah, it is pretty neat. Because I I know exactly what he's. I'm sure you know exactly what he's talking about too. Like you go to a show, and either if they don't have a lighting guy, they're just leaving certain lights on or whatever. 
And if they do have a lighting guy, all it is is somebody sitting up there, you know. They do it all from here, man. Yeah. It's all done from like an iPad nowadays where the sound guy, the line guy can't, can be like the same person. He's walking around during the show doing everything, mm -hmm. you know, it's great. Hey, Keith, Keith Hampton is on uh, Facebook. Well, I'm back. Hey, man. I didn't want to leave you hanging too long. I didn't want to pull uh, Alex Skolnick and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that and that show was so weird because he had just random people like hanging out in his apartment knocking stuff over and uh and that one time he was just like hey uh I'm gonna go check on my cat and make some spaghettios so I'll be back and like <laughs> for like 15 minutes I like spaghettios those are delicious <laughs> Well, De Deja Voodoo has a question for you, OJ. He says, uh, what's your rider going to look like tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Is your green room still called a green room amongst all the green screens? That's funny. Uh, the rider will probably be Gatorade, a couple um, uh, cheladas, which is basically Bud Light with the uh, lime juice. We've got some of those stocked <laughs> up in our fridge and then some coffee. So, yeah. Not, not that we're. I, I, I'm not going to eat heavy because uh, I saw a couple pictures of myself last year. And <laughs> I looked a little rotund around the belly, and I know it's probably because we ate some food at the venue like an hour before, and I was all fat. Oh, <laughs> tomorrow's going to be nothing but liquid, maybe some, uh, maybe some yogurt in the morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in skinny as hell. No yeah, that's what or nothing. That's yep. where the that's where you kick on the green screen, man. You exactly. know, and you you wear a shirt, you know, that makes you look really thin. Yep. And yep. you know, or to completely different body, you know, same face. <laughs> and uh, I saw somebody ask what the set list is tomorrow. I was just looking for that. I was looking yeah. for that as well. That was up there. Um, unfortunately, I can't. You know, I'm not at liberty. I, I mean, I don't want to do that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> I think that's part of the fun for people to watch is to not know what's coming up. And then when they hear the first couple of notes, they're like, oh, yeah, man, I love this song. You know? yeah. Or, oh, man, mm -hmm. they're playing this song. God damn it. I hate that. Right. I know. One or the other. Yeah, I could tell you now what six they are. And then a couple of you would be like, go in and, and refund your $5. <laughs> so you just have to wait. <laughs> all, all, I can, all I can say is that we're playing – we're playing two songs off each of the first three albums. You know, two songs off Fundamental Component, two off Serpents, two off Oblivion Beckons, in order of, you know, discography. And uh, the lights are actually programmed with the theme of those albums. So those albums actually have different color themes. Yeah, so, so no requests. No, no. We won't be... I am a chatty mofo, and uh, at sh live shows, uh, the band tries to keep me to not talk as much. So tomorrow, I probably won't talk at all. <laughs> so need to save my voice. <clears throat> now, notice, everybody, OJ said the first three Byzantine records, right? Yes. I didn't do anything on those three records. <laughs> no. no. Should, I, should I take this personally? No. <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, we we knew each other. We met on the second album, the second album. Yeah, because it came out on that tour. Mm -hmm. We were in Cleveland, and uh, I remember Skip, our old bass player, drove about. He his family rented a bus. You remember that? Yes, yes. He drove it like a uh, sixty rednecks from Pittsburgh <laughs> out to Cleveland for that show. <laughs> it, it sold out. Um, it was at the Odeon. Mm -hmm. So oh, that show, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, we didn't start working until later. But um, you know, Serpents is a really. I think it sounds really good. They did a really good job on that. That was Brad Divins mm -hmm. and um, crap. I, I Aaron Fisher, Brad Divins, and Drew Mazurik worked mm -hmm. on that album. And Brad was just the producer, and now Brad is like a uh, like an award-winning front of the house guy. 
he's like one of the best in the world. Um, so it's good to, you know, have his name on it. He mm-hmm. works for Garbage and who, uh, Enrique Iglesias and, you know. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So he probably doesn't bring up the Byzantine uh, credit. No, he, he, uh, we, we talk, uh, you know, the good thing about this pandemic is that all of these real musicians, they're home twiddling their thumbs. So they will answer their phone now. So like, I'll get a hold of Brad and he'll be like, Hey man, what's up? Like normally I can't, can't talk to him at all, mm-hmm. but I'm taking advantage of it. Um, but Brad, yeah. He was like, man, yeah, I, I had fond memories of that album. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, ben Tom has a question for me. He says, did OJ bring flowers for your first date? <laughs> what? I don't want flowers from OJ. I get, yeah. I get other stuff, you know? The, the flowers. Let's find that picture where we're at the dock after our oh, yeah. <laughs> Marble <Right>. Beach. <clears throat> your uh, your wife took a very nice picture uh, uh, where me and Jay's just sitting there talking. I've got my hand on your ass and yep. nobody's <laughs> looking except the camera. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's funny. Uh, How face has a question for you. OJ says that OJ used real amps before the C O V I D. If so. Well, they go back to them. Well, that's a good story for you because I know I know what you've been doing. So <laughs> yeah, um, Halface, um, you might be referring to the uh, experiment with the helixes. Uh, me and Brian both went uh, the helix route. I did that for about three months. I played maybe two shows with it, and I am. It's just not for me. You know, I couldn't couldn't get the grasp of it. Um, there was two shows, uh, back to back that I had issues with the Helix live and that completely turned me off on that. The, the last show we played, somebody in the crowd hit the stage or whatever and, (laughs) and and changed my presets, wiped one out. (laughs) We're in the middle of the song. (laughs) <laughs> Damn it. I'm freaking out. And and Brian has to stop playing as well. So he has to go over there and program my helix back for me because I am too stupid to figure it out. <laughs> it's embarrassing. And it, it switched to the acoustic guitar setting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was bad. <laughs> and uh I vowed after that. I was like, I'm selling it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not smart enough to use it. Um, <laughs> so I contacted Face <laughs> Boogie, who I hadn't used since Serpent's album. And f- luckily, my uh, rep at Mesa Boogie at that point is now like the VP. And he was like, come back. Mm. Yeah. So Whoa. I am, how face I am using a Mesa Boogie Triple Crown 50 uh, watt. Uh, everything's tube, everything's real. So, oh, yeah, that's the way you do it, man. You, yeah. you got you got to use the real <laughs> stuff, man. I mean, I know. Well, you know, we we uh we've been testing uh, sending uh, the DI signal out as well, uh, but we're having some issues as, with that. Uh, Jay had a good idea that maybe I need to get a DI box that splits the signal. Um, Mm-hmm. Because the, the signal I have right now is kind of affected and we can't really dial it in too good, but yeah, there it is. Little little labs. Yeah. Little labs. If I could there we go. There we go. <clears throat> it's the red eye 3D phantom. Gotcha. So yeah. How much was that? Ah oh, man, I don't I don't know. Well, if you get it from Anthony at Alto, it'll be uh it'll be cheaper, but cool. I forget how much yeah. it was. So right now, yeah, I'm using the Mesa Boogie Triple Crown. And Hendo is still using the Helix for his effects, but he is, uh, he will be playing through the EVH 5153 tomorrow. 50 watt. Is that the one that we use to record rhythm guitars for, uh, yeah, it's the album we use for Cicada Tree for the rhythm. Mm -hmm. My Mesa hasn't been on an album yet. Uh, hopefully we can test it out on the uh, EP that we do, and hopefully it wins. I don't know. It's up to you, <laughs> basically, <laughs> what we use. Well, I, I remember you told me when, when you switched back to the Mesa, um, you, you remember you called me and you are like, Daniel, the, the first show you played with it, yeah. Daniel was like, 
holy <laughs> shit, you think that's you got to keep using that because your your rhythm tone was just amazing, right? Yeah, our tour manager. Uh, th- yeah, that first show, he was like, "You're back. You're back to pushing air. You're pushing air." And everybody <laughs> says when you're pushing air, it's a good thing. So, um, <laughs> not pushing two, but pushing air. Yeah, with the helix, I was sucking air. And <laughs> there we go. Speaking of sucking something, there it is. There it is. Genie, oh, Genie just sent it to Johnny. me. There, <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, that's me and Jay after. Oh. <laughs> yep. Then there's another one. I don't know what the hell we were doing. There. <laughs> that's just that's normal. That one. God. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked about your um a quick. You know, like rig rundown. I mean, I know you're not one of those guys that has to have 50 pedals up front and all that stuff. You're kind of a simple, you know. Yeah. So, okay. Let me look at it. Do you have a guitar uh, next year or is it all packed up? No, I still got it right. I mean, it's ready to go for tomorrow. So I have all of my pedals in a tray underneath. uh, I guess I think I saw Petrucci do that, the tray system. Mm -hmm. He's got everything kind of routed in there. So I've got a tray underneath my Mesa, and let me look real quick. Uh, okay. Let's see if it's still there. Really quickly, Boner Jams. Yeah. Boner Jams, uh, I have a request, actually a demand for when you guys play the self-titled. I need uh, what's Path- that word? Pathogen. Pathogen. No excuses, he says. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> it, it, uh, what he's doing is he's setting us up for failure, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> was that all yours? <laughs> that was, that was all yours. <clears throat> two straws. I don't know if you saw it. There were two straws. Oh. You know? <laughs> Umbrellas. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, pathogen, it's, it's our fastest song and most technical and it never it wasn't even supposed to be on the album and jay heard it and he's like i'm not hitting record one more time until you agree to put that song on the album so we did and <laughs> now people always request it I, I can't play that <laughs> well see that that's that's the song where you slip the tracks into ableton <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh rig rundown you know, I'm, I'm coming. Uh, I have my Mesa. Uh, I have two MXR pedals. Um, I use a MXR carbon copy delay oh, for dude. my for my clean and, and my my yeah. lead. Yeah. I have a MXR. Uh, it's called a Custom Badass Overdrive. Yeah, and so it's kind of like the the green. You you know the Tube Screamer. It's uh, mm-hmm. it does uh, basically that. But it has a uh, it has a real nice warmth to it. I just have it set really low just to give it some extra bite. Um, I use a um, a rock Rocktron noise suppressor, which uh, works fantastic uh, for cutting out all the string noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got one more pedal. Um, it is a okay, hey, Amanda. <clears throat> one more pedal and this is only on my cleans it is a tc helicon hyper gravity uh it's a very tiny pedal and i saw devin townsend demo it and it is a, a it's a compression pedal so i use that to kind of you know tighten up my my clean tone um and then i just have a dc brick that runs everything and then I have a um, line six um, wireless unit. But uh, for tomorrow, we've got so much wireless signal going on tomorrow in here <laughs> that we're all going wired. Good. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 That wireless um, unit, it won't it won't see the light of day until we hit a stage. <clears throat> so where's uh where's your backwards guitar? Is it next to you? Um. I've got I've got one over here on the wall, and the other one is uh, on the I, on the floor. On the floor. <laughs> the other one is uh, in the uh, case. It's uh, I intonated it uh, yesterday. So, 
Yeah. Oh, you, you play left-handed. Yes, sir. Oh, that's why he said that. Okay, yeah, because I, I just realized what he was saying. Because I yeah. always, you know, I always bust his balls. And I, I know it's not ball busting because he's a left-handed guitar player. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Right but, there, yeah. yeah so, whenever, uh, whenever we, you know, all the times I record them, I'll just, hey, grab your backwards guitar over there. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, have a left-handed amplifier too? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to show something kind of neat. I, I like to tinker with stuff. Um, everybody kind of knows that I'm a contractor. Um, I build bathrooms during the day or whatever. Murder for hire. Yeah. So <laughs> I've, got this, I've got this little thing here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, see my Mesa Boogie amp right there? Mm -hmm. right there is a black box. <clears throat> so let me show you what I did. Um so to cut down on noise in here, because we're so close to the drums and my, my, my Sennheiser has been picking up a lot of drums. I mm -hmm. made a, I went to a, a Hobby Lobby. And yes. I, I got a, uh, I got a box I painted it black. I filled it with the uh, drywall and then I put some uh, Arlex and, and some insulation in it. I cut a hole around the uh, microphone and then, I just slide it over the uh, the mic like that, and now we have a isolation box for uh, guitar mics. Which I looked online, and oh, I could wow. not find I could not find any uh, any ISO boxes for guitars. So I might have to make some. <laughs> oh, there there are some, but they're expensive, man. Are they? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Their, uh, vocal mics that were pretty expensive as well. So, mm -hmm. but um, right when we slip those on the amps, the 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 drums kind they go away. It's yeah. uh, hopefully tomorrow you guys will be able to get a really good guitar tone in your computers from us. <laughs> that's amazing, man. You weren't kidding, man. You, you, I, ain't, I ain't fucking around, dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's man. Yeah, and then uh, you know, like I'll show you up in the top inside our ceilings. Each one of the bays here, where they worked on cars, they had uh, skylights. So we covered uh -huh. those up, and um, I've got Arlex in the holes up there, and that's a panel that's angled, so we can change the angle of it. Um. And then over here, like I, this front wall is really loud. So I've got soundproof blankets hanging up there 12 feet high. So mm -hmm. tomorrow, uh, the room noise should be kind of gone. So we'll see. Yeah, because that's the main thing is all the reflections and all that stuff. So Yeah, man. When we first uh, built, when I first put the drywall in here, it's, I've got double, double sheeted 5 eighths in this room. So we had to sheet it twice. Mm -hmm. So the first layer went up and then we applied the green glue acoustical compound, which is expensive as shit. Yeah, like, it is. yeah it's $300, I think, for a five gallon bucket. And I bought nine of them. So um, and then I, I put my second layer of five eights and then we got in here. And I was like, oh, this is going to sound good. And I was clapping. I was like, oh, my God, this is horrible. <laughs> do so. Can't return it. Yeah, can't return it. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, there's I've got steel beams going through the ceiling, and we've tried the Rlux and stuff, but yeah, the reflections are really hard to take care of. I think, um, you know, if I had the space, we might do a drum shield, but you know, with the with the lights, that the reflections on that might might be an issue. So we'll just we'll just see. You know, Jay's. Jay's been able to uh, to help us uh, on some test uh, test uh, samples, so I, I think it'll be okay. Nice, yeah, nice. I'll, I'll be right back, real okay. quick. Okay. We got a um, there was a question from Bent Tom. He says, uh, "How is OJ so humble and still able to murder the strings with his rhythms? Also, <laughs> any tips on building rhythmic parts and ideas?" Oh well, let's just skip the first part. <laughs> there's no reason to go into how humble I am. So <clears throat> um, that's just 
my my upbringing. So, um, but what was the second part? How do you construct good? What, what size pants do you wear? Oh no no. How do you construct? <clears throat> oh yeah. And also, any tips on building rhythmic parts and ideas? Mm. Well, uh, one of the things that helps me a lot is um, I write the bulk of my riffs in the car with the tempo of the turn signal. I'm always playing drums, uh, doing that, you know, bah, 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 with that turn signal. And, you know, it's uh, it, that helps a lot. I wrote uh, on Serpents, there was a song called Temporary Temples. I wrote the whole thing without touching the guitar. It was all in by now da, 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 with that, that turn signal going. I had it all planned out. What car was it? Because every turn signal, none of you know, no two are exactly. A, uh, I had a Jeep Cherokee Sport that had a uh, that had a uh, uh, a turn signal that was around 168. <laughs> so almost everything on uh, my new casket, slipping on noise, stick figure, they're all around the same camera <laughs> over that Jeep. So <laughs> now imagine, think of it this way: now if somebody had that same car. Mm -hmm. And they have that album on. Yeah. You know, on their turn. Wait a Look minute. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Uh, I use that. Uh, also, um, try uh, as far as constructing riffs and stuff and, and originality, I try to uh, stay away from listening to too much heavy metal. Um, because, mm -hmm. you know, you end up just kind of copying other people and, um, you know, just – I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't practice guitar all the time. Uh, I'm kind of utilitarian in that, and especially when it comes to writing. Jay knows this that I won't write anything for a long period of time, and then I'll just flip the switch, get into the mind, turn on my Pro Tools, and just write for three months straight, and then it really starts cooking. So you, so you got to kind of let it build up. You know what I mean? Those riffs, you got to let it build up and then let it out. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's that's good I think, advice. That's I think if good. I did like, if I tried to write riffs every day, I would get really discouraged because it'd be such crap, you know, over and over. That'd be like, oh man. So I just let it build up. You know? It'd be what? the same. You'd be it'd writing, be you'd be writing the same thing every day. And then. Yeah. The inspiration is is like you said, letting it build up. Or myself, you know, I, I play the guitar, and I actually, I don't even listen to guitar music. Right. Most of, most of the music I listen to, there's no guitar in it at all. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I, I get but I get inspired by the stuff. So yeah. when I apply that to the guitar, you know, it makes it a little different. Yeah, you know? it takes a whole, takes on a whole different uh, a whole different you know feel. Because you're mm -hmm. bringing the inspiration from non-guitar related music and putting it on a guitar. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. everybody everybody does it differently, and that's yeah. that's the beauty of of the creativity of music. You know, I, I do know that uh, when you were writing, um, what the hell's it called again? <laughs> to release or no, the cicada <laughs> tree. Jesus. Mm -hmm. man. <laughs> um. Yeah, that one. There you go. I remember you sent me all the demos and you were like, I'm done. I'm done writing the, 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 the album. You know, I finished writing the album. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> I listened to, I listened to everything. I listened to all the demos and I was like, you're, you're not, not done. done. Yeah. You're not, you're, done. Like, you're not done. And I was like, but I am. <laughs> and you were like, you think you are, but try again. <laughs> and uh, I remember in a rush, like in about two weeks, I wrote two more songs. And it was incremental and the cicada tree. Yep, and incredible. you were like, now you're done. That, yeah. That's what this album needed was the, the title track. So and yeah. I think sometimes, you know, if if you <clears throat> like you talked about, like you guys both talked about, you know, if you're trying to write something every day, every day, every day, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, it gets thinned out. Like you're not writing something that's like, holy shit. Right. But you at that moment, I'm sure you felt a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes people, you know, it, it, you see how they handle pressure sometimes. And I think you, you know, like Cicada Tree, it's a, it's a very different song on the album. But I think yeah. it goes so well with the rest. That album, if anybody hasn't heard the Cicada Tree yet, 
you, you got to listen to it, even if you're not a big metal guy, because there are a lot of parts on that album that are just so musical. And, uh, you know, like that's one of those goosebump albums for me, man. I get well, I remember when we tore into it and uh, me and you and Hendo, our, our guitar player, Brian Henderson, we all agreed that we needed to uh, have a common theme, which was the old school Metallica harmonies. And we went through the albums and we were like, okay, we need to put like a uh, disposable hero or to live us to die type harmony. And we kept toying with it to get it. And man, it opened up a whole new level of, uh, of feel on that album. Yeah. And we would put them in spots that people that, you know, uh, you wouldn't think needed to be there or whatever. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, I think the, when I was in a rut or when I felt like I was done on that album and uh, what I did was I went back and revisited some demo tapes I had laying around from uh, like 15 years ago, stuff that didn't make it on oblivion beckons or serpents, like mm -hmm. really old stuff. And I found a riff on there that was really distorted and I was like, but the beat was like really shitty. <laughs> and then we took that off and, and made it rock, uh, not made it the guitars not so distorted. That became the theme for the cicada tree song. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, now I'm cooking with gas. So, yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's one of Ellie's favorite sayings now is now we're cooking with gas. Oh. Cooking with gas. Yeah. That's so nice. Wow. Um, I didn't feel as much pressure to write that one as I did uh, to release, though, even though Metal Blade was waiting to be handed the cicada tree. Mm -hmm. I felt more pressure on to, uh, on the other one before that because uh, I, I ended up – because we had just got Brian and Sean in the band, and I knew I had to write like 99.9% of to release that was frustrating mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so brian came in and sean came in on the cicada tree and wrote a lot of good parts and helped me tie a lot of things together so well and there are a lot of people that um that believe your that the cicada tree is your guy's best album which has got to be cool it's your sixth album right i think yes yeah yeah. So imagine that, like you got six albums out, and there's there's a, a lot of people who consider that album like your, you know. Yeah, the top. Yeah. I know that that definitely um, gives me hope for the uh, next couple albums we have to turn in the Metal Blade. I guess it uh, shows we still have some gas left in the tank. Yep. And you're cooking with it. Yeah, going to cook with it. So <laughs> going to build up. So. <laughs> <laughs> So again, can you just real quick, uh, if anybody joining us, um, where they can go to pre or I guess purchase a ticket for tomorrow's live stream? Yeah, we can put we can put the link in the in the chat. Oh yeah. Oh, if anybody that has a wrench, you can just find find that link and you can, we can put it right in, like directly right to it. And actually, I'll put that link when we're done on on replay. Um, as soon as we're done, I'll put it in the description below, like right there. So. That would be helpful. I appreciate it, guys. So uh, I know the link is probably long, but at least uh, you just go to stage it, S T A G E I T dot com, and type in Byzantine in the search bar. And well, find the, uh, find the, the uh, ticket link. There's only three tickets left, man. What? Yeah, only three no tickets way. left. Yeah. Thank you. Has wow. anybody in the chat? Has anybody in the chat bought a ticket while we were uh, uh, we started? Since you we started? better grab one before the three of us grab one. Read, yeah. So if you're watching, <laughs> this, uh, we're not releasing any more after this. I, you know, this was a very this was a marketing strategy that we utilized in uh, putting a small reserve on the tickets and then releasing some more. There you go. But uh, after this twenty, that should be done. Um, if if we sell 120 tickets, that would be fantastic. And then the next show, uh, when we stream another performance, we'll a lot. We'll start out with 150. So, Jeff K got my ticket. <laughs> Is that a banjo? <laughs> uh, 
I muted the mic because I don't want anybody to hear it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh oh. <clears throat> and then I know you don't want to say this, but I will. I'm mm. just noticing now that on the bottom left hand of the screen, there is a tip the artist spot. Yes, there is. Yes, there so, is. So during the show, uh, if you feel like you are getting your money's worth plus some, you can always tip us while we play. And uh, that would be great. You know, I am hoping that somebody in Europe is shit faced drunk at nine <laughs> o'clock. <and they> like, <laughs> Accidentally tip two thousand <laughs> notes. Yeah, two left. Two left. There we go. And oh. Tom purchased one. Awesome. Yeah, dude. So um, I, I want to show the uh, new shirt that we'll be selling tomorrow. So, Ooh. Rob through a guy named Matilla. He was a head guy. At that little, I do data, and he needed data. Guy. Okay. So, um. Let me show you guys the uh, uh, new kick drum logo we made for Matt. Can you see this? Hold on. My picture on that? Oh. Oh, look yeah. at that. Yeah, that is a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, like an optical illusion. When he kicks it, it kind of moves and shifts. So it's moving on the screen. Yeah, it is. I, I, do. Can, I can see it moving. Yeah. Whoa. We, we got shirts made of this, and my fiance put the shirt on, and it started moving. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "That is the coolest thing." So, um, yeah, we wanted to put something on there that what didn't have the band logo or something kind of spacey. So mm -hmm. we've got a shirt uh, for sale tomorrow uh, that will go on sale uh, on our website and. Um, it's got that logo, got Byzantine on the back. It's called Spe my. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say the S's when you've got a lisp like I do. Spheres. Yes. <laughs> I about spit all over the. <laughs> it's called suck, Suffering Suckatash. <laughs> yeah. One left. So, so, yeah, Matthew Reynolds, do we have it in two or three X? Yeah, I think we got it in 2X. We didn't get 3X in this because it's a very limited run. Just don't wash it. <laughs> yeah, just don't wash it. So, But anyway, yeah, man. We got to sell this last ticket while you're on, man. We got to sell this last ticket. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Hi, man, the Coombs. So, uh, we also got some new stickers. So, let me uh, see if I can show you guys the sticker that we're going to be selling. Um do you mind? Come on, man. Okay. Sticker, it just matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, see if you can see this. I don't know. <laughs> Might not be able to. Okay. Zoom in. The West Virginia people will love this one. So, right there. Byzantine. Fucking West Virginia metal. <laughs> and the cool thing is, is Virginia is spelled wrong. So I just noticed that. I got to fix that. <laughs> Wait a second. Let me see that. Is it Virginia? Oh, it say Virginia? <laughs> At least if it does, I want one. It does. It's spelled wrong. <laughs> Fucking West Virginia metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And on that note, the show is sold out. Yeah. Oh, no way. Sold out. Well, there we go. Thank you, guys. Awesome. So I, I, I will be up all night tonight uh, fixing that. <laughs> vagina. I want one of those, man. That's funny. Uh, oh. Well, guys, um, it's 930. Um, probably should wrap it up. We've been here an hour and a half. I said we'd do it 30 minutes. And Dude, it never it never happens. It, it's just it's so hard to, like, make these things quick. But uh, yeah. So, well, I appreciate the uh, the the interview, guys, and and uh, allowing me to jump on here and sell twenty more tickets. So, tomorrow's gonna be fun. I'm excited. Yeah, it should be cool, man. Thank you, Johnny. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad this was a, a success. Oh, dude. So, yeah. Well, I mean, we have. I haven't hit the stop button yet, so it could still. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we have time to ruin it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it can always get worse. See, everybody wants a West Virginia shirt now. Yeah, man. I prefer West Virginia. 
Well, that might be how we get around the trademark. Yeah. So, golly. Well, dude, Chris, uh, OJ, thanks, man, for coming on. And uh, yeah, have, a, have a great show tomorrow. I know it's it's something new, but awesome. Yeah. So it is it is exciting. And, um, you know. Yeah, I'm pumped. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, it'll be good to, to stream it. And then I can shave this beard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I roll. I, I grow the beard out for the shows, and then um, I cut it, and I look <laughs> look a little younger. So. Does Allison like the beard or no? Um, my kids like it for some reason, you know. But my kids do like it. Uh, Allison, I think she doesn't, because you know she's like nine years younger than me, so it looks it looks very obvious that I have like. <laughs> Rob the cradle when I have the beard. <laughs> there. Okay. Is that your grandpa? Yeah, uh, all the time. <laughs> oh, that's nice of you to take your dad out. Oh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, oh. Thanks, dude. Yeah, man. Hey, guys. Appreciate it. Everybody yes. go to... I'll put the link in the, in the chat again. Okay. Oh, yeah. Spam it. Spam it. Spam the chat with that. I'm Tell sorry, I can't. Tell everybody where to go for, for social media, dude, as well. Um, You can go to, uh, I, I guess it's just Byzantine uh, WV on Facebook. Uh, mm-hmm. It is um, official Byzantine on Instagram. And we have a Twitter, too. Uh, I don't run that, so I, I can't really. Who I don't does? want to get the wrong one. Huh? Who runs it? I don't know. <laughs> I, I see stuff posted on it from time to time. On it. Okay. Who's the, <laughs> it might be, you know, I, I don't know who it is. <laughs> so I need to get on there and ask them like who runs it. So who is this? Yeah. And oh. everybody else, uh, tweet or message metal blade and say, you want a new Byzantine record. Yeah. Contact metal good. blade. I'll tell you, they're listening right now. I have been in more contact with Metal Blade during the COVID thing than ever. You know, they they send me a lot of stuff. Like they're really excited about this live stream. Um, cool. They they are going to be looking at the amount of people that are watching, and it is going to reflect positively on the next album and how much uh, attention they give us. So. All of you guys that are watching tomorrow, I really appreciate it. But yeah, you guys can spam up Metal Blade, tell them that you want uh, a new Byzantine album, and see if they will uh, get around to uh, accepting Jay and my um, budget that we sent them, what, four months ago? Something Six? like that, yeah. Yeah. We sent them a budget for the new one, and they never got around to accepting it. So we was just like, all right. Well, oh, that must mean they uh, they accepted it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Checks in the mail. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, OJ, yeah. so great great to see you, man. Looking you forward too, to, looking forward to tomorrow. I'll be there. Thank you. And thank uh, you. it'll be awesome. awesome. Yeah. So everybody, everybody, thank you for watching. Yep. And uh, really quickly, thank you to our channel members here on YouTube. Appreciate, really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for uh, for helping support the channel in these videos. And don't forget, you can listen to the uh, the podcast on iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. And uh, tonight's episode will be a podcast soon. After Byzantine's next album comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rock on. Uh, Where, where's where's the thing here? Uh, I'll do. Oh man, I don't want to do that. I don't know what's on that. All right, I'm. This computer sucks. <laughs> All right, see you guys tomorrow night, Saturday Night Live, with your host John B. L. Awesome. Uh, all right. Good night. Okay. <laughs>